In this video we're going to be talking about artisan commands and how they might be useful. So if I switch over to my terminal here, I'm going to run php artisan and that's going to give us a list of all the default artisan commands. Now what if we want to add our own? Well we can do this with the php artisan command make. And I'm just going to look at the help for this. So here you'll see that we have one argument and that's the name of the command. And then we have some options down here which we don't have to use. But I'm not going to go through all of these but do take a look in your own time. So I'm going to say php artisan command make foo. And if we look in our app commands directory you'll see that command here. So there's a couple of things we need to do in here before we can start writing our command. The first thing we need to do is set our command name. So I'm going to set this to foo. So when a user or when a developer types php artisan foo, that's when our command will be executed. The next thing that we need to configure is our description. I'm just going to say lorem ipsum. We're going to skip this for now. Instead we're going to go down here and we're going to comment this out. We're going to be looking at this later so don't worry. And I'm just going to instead return an empty array and the same for the options. And there we go. So before we start writing our command let's go to app start artisan and down here we're going to say artisan add and inside here we want to pass a foo object so we want to instantiate that like so. So inside the terminal let's run php artisan scroll up and here we go you see our command right here. So we can run php artisan foo and of course nothing is going to happen because we didn't do anything inside of this fire method. So this fire method will be called or invoked when our command is executed. So what we can do is we could say this info foo has been fired. Run php add some foo and we get a little message here. We can also do things like error. So let's go to our terminal and run php add some foo and there we go we get foo has been fired and it looks like an error message. So back in here I'm going to show you one other thing. I'm going to say if this confirm and we'll say are you sure and we'll say this info you are sure. So let's run php add some foo and we get this little confirmation uh, little message and we can type yes and then we get you are sure. So let's clear that. This is all well and good. We now have to create a command but well we haven't looked at arguments and options and I don't think that we can truly learn without looking at a real example. So I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to create a new command php adds and command make. Uh, we'll call this uh, generate user. Inside of here we need to we need to set some config. I'm going to say uh, user generate like so and the description will be generate a new user. Okay so in here we'll just say for now this info user generated and of course we're lying we haven't generated anything yet but let's not worry about that. We'll add this command in our addison file. So addison add new generate user. Now if we run php addison you'll see our command right here. So let's run it php addison user generate and oh we didn't we didn't clear the arguments but never mind we're going to add some arguments now so if we look at the get arguments method we're returning a multi-dimensional array containing our arguments and in this example we want to pass two arguments we want to pass a username and an email so our developer could type php artisan user generate and we would have username here and we could also have email like so and then we may want to pass an option like password equals test or something like that. So here we're going to have two arguments like we discussed. We're going to have username and this will be required so we're going to leave that as is. And our description will be this, uh, the user's username. 
and we need to escape this. So we're going to duplicate this and rename this to email. And there we go. And let's just get rid of this for now. And again, return an empty array. Let's run php add to user generate. And you'll see that we get this message here. And we also get the correct usage or the syntax of the command. So user generate username email. Uh, sorry, php add to send php artisan user generate username email hit enter and we get our user generated message so up here what i want to do is i want to first before we do anything just output one of these options or these arguments sorry so to do that we call this argument and then we pass the argument name so let's say username so php artisan user generate will say terry and i'll just pass in some random data and there we go, we get our username. So let's clear that. And now we're actually going to generate the user. So we're going to say, we could either use our eloquent model here, or we could use the DB class. We're going to use the eloquent model for now, just to make things simple. So we'll say uh, user equals new user, username equals this argument name. And keep in mind that you may want to do some validation here. You may want to check if the name or email has already been taken. And if it has, you could just have a conditional statement and say this error username uh, reserved or something like that. So user email equals this argument email. And then we're going to say user save. And then we're going to say this info user has been generated and just to make this a little more personal I'm going to say uh, user user name so let's run this php addison user generate I uh, will put in Terry and we'll just put in john at example.com and we get an error because I accidentally named this wrong so this should be username in fact just because this is called name I'm going to rename this to name just to be uh, just to be consistent okay so let's try this one more time hit enter and there we go user Terry has been generated so let's look in our database hit refresh and there is our user now, of course, we want to add a password too, but we probably want that to be optional. So down here, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to uncomment this, and I'm going to say password. And down here, we're going to set the example to the user's password. So let's have a look at these arguments really quickly. The first one is, as you probably already guessed, the name of the option. The second one is a shortcut, which is basically, as it sounds, a shortcut to the option. The next argument is the uh, the option type. So in this case, it's going to be optional, and we do want this to be optional. Next, we have the description, and finally, we have a default value. And in this case, I'm going to set the default value to password. So up here, I'm going to say user password equals and we want to hash this so hash make this option password so let's run php adds to user generate and here you see that we have this password option here so let's try it php adds in uh, user generate i will have the username as um, billy and we'll have billy at example.com for the email and for the password, we'll set that to, and you know what, let's just quickly get rid of this so we know that our option is working. So password equals test. And there we go, user Billy has been generated. Look in our database, and there we have our name, email, and password.